Betty boy, Betty boy, Betty boys, go. Fuck out of here. Guys, what's up? Uh, how we doing today? This is the Beta Boys Podcast, and I'm here with my best friend, T. Hey, hey, hey. So what's up, bestie? <laughs> all right, Dr. Stop. <laughs> fuck you no, up, please. Oh all God. right, wait till what after. What's happening with your shit? You look good, Daddy. Stand. What do you mean? Fuck you, bro. Nick, how'd you break shit already? All right, it's perfect. I fixed it. All right, this is T. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I'm scared to describe you because I don't want to do it wrong. Um, Describe myself and basically who I am, what I do, or what? Yes. Me, I do bodyguard work for celebrities, for celebs. Can't name them, you know, confidential, but I also do bail bonds. If you need a bond, also hit me up. I'll stay bail bonds. What else? So how did you get into that shit? You I'll just woke up one bonds. day and you're like, yo, I'm big as fuck? Well, actually, my friend introduced, it, introduced me into it. He came home one day, hit a vest with a gun and everything. I said, what you do, man? He said, I do uh, warrants. I, I actually go out and get the people that owe oh, so he said, you want to get into it? I train you. So I, he trained me. Uh, he had me go out and do a ride along. And I said, okay, I like it. That's sick. <laughs> yeah. So did being a bodyguard get you into bail bonds? No, nah, uh, bodyguard, being a security officer, got me into being a bodyguard. But bail bonds, I just seen it one day and I liked it. And then I watched the dog, the bounty hunter, and then... <laughs> so you get to chase people and shit? I get to chase people, hunt their ass down. Oh, that's hard. Oh, you have like a taser? Fuck? I got a taser, got a gun, I got pepper spray. So is, got... are you like Dog the Bounty Hunter or whatever? Like well, we once can't a week say or Bounty or Hunter because like... state of Florida is the only certain states you can't be a bounty. You actually be an agent. You actually go to school, to police academy and everything. So you chase people like wearing a suit and shit? No, you wear a bulletproof vest. You wear everything that equipped. With to go hunt because some of these fugitives don't want to go back. It's fugitives. I feel you. Of all the states, I'm surprised Florida's the one that's like you can't be a bounty hunter. Like Florida's nah, well, like the wild the states, west with everything. All the else. states. The only one is basically Hawaii is probably you can do a, be a bounty hunter. Everybody okay. else, they want you to be trained properly. So where the fuck was Dog the bounty hunter doing this shit? What you mean? He he's a convicted felon, so he can't really do the stuff that we do or oh. carry certain things. But he he do have a team out there that carries that. I feel like he carries like a whip and shit. No, nah, he don't carry no whip. He's just or a like cowboy. A I like his style. Yeah, I fuck with that. Make me want to be a cowboy. No, nah, I feel it. <laughs> if you were chasing me on a motorcycle, I'd be like, this feels so right. Fuck you. Come right. on, dog. <laughs> so what do you like better? Body like guarding bodies or bonding bail? Me is both, because both you make the money. You make the income. I like bonding I like doing security because the adventures you go on. Yeah. Different cities, different countries I have been on. I would never flew on a plane if it wasn't for bodyguard. Really? My first time on a plane is being offered to go. And it was 17 hours away to France. For what, first time on a plane <laughs> To do bodyguard work. Has anyone yeah, ever, like, tried sick. to check you with that shit? Well, it's, people going to try to test you because they short man syndrome. I'm 6'6", six, six and over 200-something <laughs> pounds. So <laughs> You're so scary. So it's, I ain't trying to be scary, but you test me, you will get punished. Uh, it, how many you people? you tried to already. Nah, <laughs> stop, bro, please. Just look at the camera. How scared. many people, like, see you coming, Man, they know what's happening. Seats? Stop, stop, stop. How many people see you coming, they know what's about to happen, and they just, like, they just hand themselves over. They're just Nick, like, this. Fuck man this. is so intimidating. That's what some, I mean. That's my question. Some people give you a challenge because they want to run. Like, about two months ago, a guy tried to run in handcuffs. So, <laughs> is this bail bonding or uh, bodyguard? There's bail bonds. Damn. Bodyguard, you really have more crowd control than more of an individual. Because most most of the time, when the, your artists or your celebrity or on a stage or doing a talk show, yeah, they basically an individual try to come up and try to hug them or try to steal they merchandise or even try to hit them. But um, you, just you do your job and just you don't fucking tackle them, you fuck them up. So it's more than just, but besides bodyguard. Bodyguard is basically a technique. You got to use techniques to get a weapon, a gun, yeah. the threat away from your client. That's it. Do you always feel like you're on like the clock, though, like when you see shit now? Because then you're just driving. You'd be like, I could fuck this person up if I wanted to. Sometimes it's reaction not to react because sometimes you have to react. Even you, you might not, you might be riding down the street. Lady might be fucked up in a car accident. Yeah. Your first instant might jump out the car. Oh, I got to help this person. Now I'm a honker. I'm like, move, bitch. Nah, hell no. <laughs> nah, fuck <laughs> out of here. I got places to go. You got grandma, you got a mother out there. And um, that's the majority of, that's what you do. But you will never want to mix your personal life with your business life. Yeah. It's because you miss that with, with your life, then you'll be a fucked up loser and fucked up in the head. <laughs> I feel you. Well, why do you think that is? Why do you think so many people like mix them together? Because if you mix them together, basically you're a lunatic. 
you lose cannon. Then nobody gonna work with you. Yeah, because then you're emo you're bringing all your, your emotions. emotions. To the you table don't never want to be. Even though men have emotions, and a lot of men want to be pussies and say, "Oh, I don't have emotions. I'm a man." Everybody got feelings. Yeah. Even in relationship, men has feelings just like women have feelings. I feel you. And believe it or not, me, I will not open the door for a woman. You know why? You got to close it on them. Not just close it. Eagle rights, dog. The king go first. Oh. The queen come after or walk together. So would you hold the door for them? Why would you hold a door? Let's say if it's an older lady, but yeah. my woman, I'll go in the door first. So and if anything harm, it's going to harm me first before her. Ah. See, nobody never thinking of that. Mm-mm. You look at it more from like a self protect uh, self protection yeah. like like view. Okay, so like, do you find it's tough? Like, I don't know the dynamics of being a bounty hunter. Do you find it's tough to separate your personal life from that? Because if you see the person you're after, regardless, even if it's a random moment that you're like, you have to be on, so to speak. You have to. You on the clock twenty four hours. Yeah. So if you see the individual and you want another client, you have to make the calls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, the client right in front of me. You guys got to move quick. So we work with 15 guys from here to Georgia. Oh, shit. Okay. So okay. it's Miami, Palm Beach, Duval, Jacksonville, and Georgia. We got a team. So wow. We It's just not me individually. Okay. It's like, say from us, us three, we yeah, work for under, under one insurance company. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But this insurance company is nationwide. So they can say, hey, I got some a couple agents in your area is going to be next week, and I can fly them out. I can fly okay. them down. Okay. I was thinking so, like you were like part like terminator and you just like no 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 bodying. you gotta create a team i never want to okay. go on, no matter how big it's well i'm not trying to be the superhero man yeah <laughs> at the end of the day you want to go home you want to go home i need to go home mm -hmm. yeah you got to be smart about so it. you just go yeah. squat it up squat up gotta I be mean, 10 15 deep you will never want to go two or solo you go solo you're gonna fuck yourself over i know a guy that went in by himself he got fucked up he never caught his guy because when he was trying to apprehend the other guy his uncle the uncle of the client of the warranted fugitive came yeah. across the head and hit him across the head. He, he knocked out, got took the gun, took his vest. He woke up outside. Oh shit! So you never want to do like anything. he responded. Yeah. He had dick. So how does it work? Because like you're technically not law enforcement, right? You're not law enforcement, but you have some jurisdiction that's over law enforcement. So you can run a red light. You can't run them. Nobody can run a red light. <laughs> Even the but cops. Even the if cops. you if you're running after your individual that you know, the one who's wanted you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta do whatever you, you can to catch the individual I feel you. because it could be a murderer a sexual predator most wanted fugitive you gotta you gotta handle your business and conduct your business in a professionally manner of way I feel you. so you do have jurisdiction then like when you're going after someone you do have like more than just like if it were like some schmuck like me running after the dude you have like more of like a jurisdiction or right to of run a regular after them person and like absolutely do what you need to do absolutely and can you, you citizens arrest them it's no such thing as citizen arrest. We have powers of arrest. It's oh, only two shit. people in the world have powers of arrest. Us and law enforcement. That's it. That's dope. But you're like a private contractor, basically, for law it's, enforcement. We're, we're contracted through the courts. Okay. Because you're, okay. you're technically you're on bond. So mm. we're basically court officers. Oh, okay, okay. I, I would never guess. Because if the judge write a warrant... On a police officer, we got to go get the police officer. Why? Oh, so there's times you're even, like, you have to go after cops, like, just because you're independent Not just cops individual, but if the cops does something and he get posted, he has a bond, and he's violated his bond, he's violated anything, we, the judge wrote the, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, the warrant, we call it a KPS, lawful term, then it comes to our desk, we go get him. Wow. Okay. So we go after any, anyone, no matter who you are. Dude, that's crazy. That's that's warrant, that's in your name, you on bond. We coming after you. Do you put headphones in when you chase them? Headphones? Like to listen to music? You, why would you want to listen to music with your life is on the line? More suspenseful, dog. Nah. Yeah, you need. I would. You need to be alert. If they come out, pull a gun, alert. and you're distracted. And no, who <laughs> wants to go back to jail, serving a forty year prison term? No one, dog. But exactly. I'm gonna feel more committed to get you if I have salsa music blasting in my right ear. I'll have like the left ear so I can like. Hear, That's like, when you're on the way to it. You listen to music, get hyped. Everybody get amped up when it's you know it's time yeah, to. Yeah, it's it. time to fucking go. It's time to go. But then when you see him, so if you catch them, we you, catch them. We lock their ass up. We take yeah. them to jail. Do you play like music when you like or drive? Nah, ain't no loop music. We ask them what made you run. Why is it running? Just know you're not coming on our bond anymore. Oh. And for future, don't ever come to the office or anything because you know you're a runner. And we'll let our partners, our other partners, know that you ever bond this person out, it's possible he can He's run. A runner. Oh fuck! So it fucks you up. Not only run away from us, it fucks you up in the long run. But why do they give him that opportunity to be like, "Yo, all right, you have forty. Like, what's the max sentence you can get and still get bonded?" 
No, it's no such thing as my sentence. So if someone gets life, they can still post bond? No, you get life, you get life. You haven't been sentenced. We get you oh, when you win the J before yeah. before um You go to county. Before um first appearance. Yeah. We get you before first appearance or after first appearance, because right there that's not judgment day. That's not where a jury or somebody has convicted you. You're so, not convicted. So if you bond them out and then they get an FTA, that's when you go to them? That's when we get them. Ah, oh, okay. An FTA, you can go to, you'll figure to appear, anything. But sometimes, if you FTA, you don't always, we don't always have to pick you up. You can do a walkthrough. Like where? In the county. The county that you got arrested in. Uh -huh. And that you an have FTA a failure to appear. appear. Mm -hmm. Failure like to appear. Court. And um, a walkthrough is basically you come back to the office, you put that amount of bond, 10% or the whole, and um, the full balance. And let us know, okay, you want you're gonna go to court. You you're basically giving us a trustworthy. We trusting you, they're saying you're gonna go to court this time around. Yeah. So we go to the county, we um take you into the main office, show your ID, they fingerprint you, whatever, blage, blage, and say, Okay, I'm gonna show up to court on this particular day. That's mm -hmm. a walkthrough. So yeah. your warrant disappear. And then you go back to being on bond. So that's that's the other way around it. You know, always have to come looking for you. Always have to come looking for you if you're not responding to our phone calls. If you're not showing up to the court, you're not trying to reach out to the courts or your your lawyer. Damn. But do they put, like, an address and everything when they make bond? Absolutely. You have to put an address. Yeah. Even if, when you get arrested, you have to have an address. Okay. If you don't have an address, we put at large. And who's going to want to bond somebody out who don't have an address? Yeah. So, like, let's say they go out on bond and everything like that, right? Mm. You're, the bond agency is fronting them money. Correct. So, 10% if we trust you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, for instance, if it's $5,000, if you're born here, we only ask for 10%. But if you're not born here, you have your, your we we ask you to surrender your passport. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a... So you can't just leave, leave the country. The country oh, because gosh. you got to let us know. Even to leave the county, you have to let us know. So but then how do, do they, they make money? Do they pay interest on it? I was about to say, do they like put like personal effects items on the line? That, only that, if like... it's a certain amount. Like, say if it's... Two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bond. Mm -hmm. We can ask for collateral. It's called collateral. Yeah, anything that's is valuable of two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, so you it's put, like they put can a they lean put their towards house? it. If they put the house up, put a lien okay. towards the house. Or if they have like a Rolex and it's a ten thousand dollar bond, you can like put that as put, collateral put that or something as, like that. Put that possible if it's worth that. We have to exactly. get it looked at. We have to get it estimated. We have to. Okay, uh, that's what I was wondering. Like for the, show for show, that is yeah, going to be yeah, ten, yeah. ten, ten thousand. You can't yeah. say, oh, this is a Rolex. It's worth ten thousand. No, we yeah, have it to could get be all like up. from Chinatown or something. Right. We got to make sure it's real and gotta everything make like sure. that. Okay, I was just wondering, like, where's the financial like gain for you guys if you're just it's taking basically on this we risk? we pay thirty percent to the insurance company. We pay a percentage towards the courts, and we keep it into a buff account. It's called buff account. Buff account is basically an account that goes for, an, it pays for forfeitures. Like, say, for instance, you forfeiture on your bond. And we have to pay it straight out. I don't out. even know what that shit means. Forfeiture is basically saying, say for instance, a two thousand dollar bond. Yeah. You you only came up with ten percent. So that buff account makes sure we take care of that whole two thousand. We gotta pay the courts. Okay. But we got up to sixty to ninety days to find you and they reimbursed us on that. So you don't never wanna spend out your buff account. And that's it's also where insurance company you keep it, trust you with their money. Mm hmm So that's where the actually trust come in at. Okay. Okay. But if that's why me, if you born from another foreign country and you come here and you cause problems, you cause situations, we want the whole thing and you got to surrender your passport. Damn. Yeah. To make sure Absolutely. they're not going too make far. Make sure you're not going too far leaving the country. Even if you're on bond and not from here and you are from here, you still have to let us know that you're about to leave or what your next plans are, what you're about to do. We basically, your PO officers and. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah, you got to let us know. You are, own us. We own you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are there, like, check-ins? Like, you have to show up, like, once we a week? We check in, show-ins mm -hmm. show -ins at once a week, or you call. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically do that on big bonds. Okay. Because small mm -hmm. bonds, you really you really worry about the small bonds, because we have some people that runs on small You got bonds. an intimidating voice, too. How? My like, voice should like... be sexy. Oh. <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Dog, do you FaceTime them if they, like, don't answer the first time? No, we don't FaceTime. We call, make multiple calls. We do at least multiple calls and from different agents. So we, if we realize that you're not picking up our phone calls, you're not checking in, okay, you're a runner. But we also can surrender when we feel like you're a threat to the community or you have continuously doing the same crime that you got into trouble with. Ah. Say, for instance, if I bond you out today, yeah. you get in trouble. An hour after I bond you out, 
we got to put you back in. You, you, you still not, you still not learning your lesson. I'm a fuck. Yeah, you fuck. Damn. How often do you get runners? Every tenth bond, every fifteenth bond, you change. It's really not determination. It depends on like we had this one guy run because of um, child pornography, and uh, we bonded him out. I'm not gonna say his name, but we're looking for you. We will find you. But he's still <laughs> running from a year now. But um, he contacted his lawyer, and his lawyer told him, "Okay, you're looking at forty years." What? So he cut his ankle monitor. We can't put your ankle monitor on you. Mm-hmm. To monitor where you're whereabouts, what you're doing, especially a, a charge like that, yeah. you will want to know where the person is. So, we we trying to handle the case that we we handle the case that we best know how to. So we we gonna look for them. we we gonna find them. Trust me, you can run, but you, just, you can't hide. That's so scary coming out of this. <laughs> like, oh my god. The yeah, Trust the me. the conviction you speak with is unbelievable. Like I'm like, there's no doubt in my mind you're gonna get this guy. Oh no, we, we gonna get him. You can hide, enjoy yourself, go to strip clubs, do all you can, but. Cases we take very seriously with children and domestics, we take very, very serious because I mean, your mom, your sister, yeah, anybody yeah. out there that can be harmed to the next person that's who don't have control of themselves. Mm-hmm. Child don't have innocent. Yeah. So we their spoken voice for them. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's so fucking beautiful. Obviously, it might be dependent on like the amount of money that's at risk and everything. But are you willing to go to like you know like California or like go far, we can go far, any, far? Anywhere, as long as we let them know, we let law enforcement in know we're in your backyard. Hey, we're giving this backyard. We're looking for X, Y, and Z. We're going to be here X amount of Z days. We're driving a certain amount of vehicles. We're here. How many agents you got? They say, do you guys need assistance? We say, yeah or nay. Okay, we're still going to come out and make sure you guys safe. Okay, thank you. We really appreciate it. One hand washes to another. Okay, okay. I was curious. It's like always like... respect. You always got to treat everybody as respect. We love law enforcement. Mm-hmm. and that, yeah, They have our back. We have their back. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering because like if like someone's on bond for two hundred grand or something like that, I would imagine at that point going to California is no big deal because they're just trying to escape regardless of where. Regardless, it is. they try to go to different states. Regardless, we still call the police department, let them know we're in there. Even here locally, we still let them know, hey, we're in your area. We're look, we're going to be driving these certain type of vehicles. We're going to be posted up. Let them know the address. Let them know who we're looking for. Reason. They mm-hmm. join or they just want to make sure everybody protected, especially come to the city. They want to make sure everybody safe. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's that's wild. So, what are like some crazy experiences you've had with this? Obviously, crazy, in the past, that crazy like, well, experiences. You know, somebody running with being in handcuffs. <clears throat> and um, did they fall? I feel like that's not like. Of course, they fell. Yeah, I was. Like, I, I don't feel like that's a efficient <laughs> way to run. It's only one way to fall. How do you think you fall with the handcuffs on you? Uh. Face first. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like you can't go that far with handcuffs. Some people can actually run with handcuffs. Really? Yeah. That's impressive. Do they just like run hands out so they try to keep their balance well, they hands going behind the hands behind the back? And the hands by the back. He really tried to run, but he went. He slipped and you know face face went first. So, but oh, he refused man. to go, and it was a stalker. So we had to get him. Oh wow! Ah. Yeah. So he was like he he, he was actually he was dangerous. We was, he was actually in the girl's bushes while we were looking for him. When what? it was raining and pouring, he was de- his determination was to look for this girl when he got out. We didn't know until we got the the okay, and then we found out where he was, location, and we told her to go somewhere that he won't know. He can't come anywhere. So she was there, and we located him in the bushes. That's still that's staking out on this girl house. That's yeah. wild, bro. Shit. What Absolutely. was he doing? You, you run, he was just in the bushes waiting to see her to come home. And God knows what would happen. That's why we the vo- we the we the vocal words for the women who can't speak for themselves, the children who can't speak for themselves, yeah, and the elderly. Because the girl he was after was his actually ex girlfriend. She got tired of him. You know, she put a restraining order and everything. Damn, and he so, fucking like he was just obsessed. Say if we didn't interact with it, she would have. You know, probably he probably would have killed her. Fuck. Yeah, it's it's. It's a lot you deal with. Dude, it's crazy when you put it like that. Like, yeah, the, that's the why I say it's, it's real dangerous. It. You got to have a stomach for it. Yeah. Because some of the things you see these guys get arrested for, uh, sometimes when you search, you know, the area that they've been in and you see it and you got to turn it over to the evidence, you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised what you see. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't even imagine. That's yeah. That's unbelievable. So, like, what do you enjoy the most? Like, obviously, that seems like a very, like, adrenaline-seeking job. I like, I like doing job. that, but I also like, I like bodyguarding because I go places that I'll never be able to afford to be. Mm-hmm. If 
if it was on me. That's fucking sick. I never can afford to go to France. I was about to say, is France the wildest place you've ever been? Or? France is the cleanest place I've ever been. Really? They're the cleanest, <laughs> authentic food. What part of France? Nice. Ooh. I went there. Every, everybody's nice. Everybody looking different, looking different. It's a different world over there. I feel like everyone in France wears striped shirts. Lies. Lies? They workaholics and everybody want to be... As soon as, you, soon as I wake up in the morning, everybody working out. The whole block, the strip is everybody running, walking. Damn. Did you join them? No, I didn't join. I was looking. I'm in another foreign country. I don't even know where the hell I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> so why would I work out somewhere I'm going up I don't know, dog. <laughs> no. Have you been to France since? Yeah, I've been to France twice. And did you work out either time? I worked... No, I, I was working. All it was right. detailed. That's got to be cool. Like a culture shock for it, sure. It is, it is definitely a culture shock because coming from a place like here where they don't appreciate you going to a place like over there, they really they appreciate you. They don't care what color race you are. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's only Even big Russia. Here. I love Russia. I love Germany. I love all those places where people have told us here, oh, you go to those places, they don't like. No, they love us there. Yeah, because I'm not going to lie. I heard Paris is like hella racist. Paris is not racist. I love Paris. Really? I love Paris. Everybody's friendly. Everybody, even McDonald's people. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to McDonald's. Here, what you want? Yeah, get your order. <laughs> that, that's like, you know the flavor is going to be better. Absolutely. Even in Jamaica, I love Jamaica too. Jamaica, I spent time over there too. Russia, France, Germany, and um, one, one other place I went to, I forgot. You been to Spain? I don't think I've been to Spain yet. Because one year I was just traveling, like traveling. But not like for work, just for like you? Work. I, every All these places I went to it for work. What the fuck? All these work. But this is for like singing motherfuckers, right? Or like celebrities. celebrities? This is yeah. for celebrities. So I actually went a couple of days here at this and then a couple of days there. That's when we were on tour. Damn. Certain areas. And you get, you get mad love everywhere else. Mad love. That's like they respect sick. you like. Germany, I love Germany and Russia so much because the doors are like 30 feet tall. They're not like here, like seven feet. The highest <laughs> yeah, you can fit in the doors? I can fit in the doors up there. Like I, when I open the door, the door is literally, I have to look all the way up to the door. No, I feel like you're <laughs> a little bit. You're like, ah, shit. And everything is 24 karat. They trust their people over there. Over here, they don't trust. Like you walk into downtown area, everything is sealed, locked down, so tight. Over there, everything is freely open because you touch something, you're going to cut your hand off. Damn. <laughs> So do you think, do you think it's just like better all overall like environment living in European countries? Is, to me, the reason why environment is more healthier and cleaner over there because they don't use a lot of processed stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also every morning I woke up in France, all I seen was a street sweeper. We barely see a street sweeper. When the last time you seen a street sweeper? Yeah, they just repaved the roads every like That's five it. years <laughs> instead of cleaning. <laughs> yeah, over there they got a street sweeper over there every night, every really? day. From morning to night, it's somebody sweeping the street. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking out. I'm like, damn, this place is clean. They also have a ton of public transit over there. They have a bunch of public transit and everything is cleaner air over there, too. There's a lot of electric vehicles over there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And smaller vehicles. You see, we yeah. have 18-wheelers over here. Yeah, they have 18-wheelers over there. But, like, F-250s you'll never see over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F-350s you'll never see over there. Big vans you won't see over there. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been there yet, but you, you couldn't even fit one of those things on the road. Like like their roads are small because their Smaller. roads are hundreds of years old instead of yeah. here where they they were built for this. You know right. what I mean? Like I and can't this wait. Diesel, you barely see a diesel vehicle on eighteen wheelers. You won't see it in vehicles, most vehicles. What the? Hey, fuck? Oh my god! You will see it in smaller cars, like because they have a small diesel, but the air is much fresher. Especially mm -hmm. France. I love I love it over there. I stay like the Mildred. Mm. Dude, that's 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 that, that awesome. just has a sexy name to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Say it's it France. I mean, come on. <laughs> so you ever like you ever bodyguarded for someone and it kind of threw you off guard? You're like, oh shit, I'm really taking care of this motherfucker right now. Well, that's when I first I was starstruck at first. Like I I was literally I caught myself. Like I'm seeing this person get off the tour the uh, sprinter, and I went I backed myself into the hotel. I'm like. Doing this right now, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then I'm looking at my reflection. I said, "Hold up, I'm here. This is my position. God want me to be here." So I just act regular and normal. <clears throat> I just act regular and normal. And then I, I ran into Michael Jordan. He was we were standing in the same hotel. He uh, walked right past me. Hey, what's up, young fella? I said, "What's up?" And kept moving. I wasn't. I was. 
I wasn't starstruck, but I was starstruck. Like, I yeah. kept my composure. But you just had to keep going. I kept going because he wasn't <laughs> my client. My yeah. client needed me, and I I wanted to show him that he's going to be safe regardless where I was. You yeah, just yeah, ran yeah. up to him full speed and dunked on him. No. <laughs> hey, what's up, dog? So, <clears throat> hell no. <laughs> so, like, with, with celebrities, right? After a while, once they get to know you, once you do enough work for them, they pretty much put you on like you're you're my guy now. Yeah, that's right? that's how it always goes. When yeah, you, I feel you like got, that work gotta, is super like you got to earn it. Yeah, because when you first meet them, they don't trust you. You got to earn that trust. You got to show them that their family, their friends are okay, and you're safe in your present. And that's how it always supposed to be. Because at the end of the day, you got to go home to your family as well. Mm-hmm. So. When people see them, they see you first because before they get to them, they got to go through you. But you have to keep your composure because sometimes people might, might you might have to ring and snap somebody's neck because of they so determined, oh, I got to get to the celebrity. I got to get to the celebrity. Yeah. So I say, yo, chill. If I tell you one more time to chill, you're going to be your neck. And then I realized I'm not playing. Even the sexiest, finest girls, hey, can I touch him? No, you're not finna, you're not finna touch him. So, okay, keep moving and keep going. We're here for a show. This is all what we're going to do. Cause at the end of the day, cause his life is in my hand. So if I let that female come, you might as well let everybody else come. Yeah, yeah. you're practically who like knows their that secret female service. is not there to set him up. A lot Dude, of females indeed, do a lot of setup. And, yeah, and just just cause it's entertainment business, I don't work for guys and also bodyguards. We in a network together. We always talk. Some of these people go. You guys got a group chat? No, we won't have a group chat. We just text. We we'll see each other. Oh, what's up, man? What's going on? Yeah. And say for instance, our artists or our clientele meet up. They go inside to talk business. We outside talking business as well. I feel you. Or oh, what happened when you were around this artist, such and such? Oh, yeah, this artist did this. This artist did that. But his client did this. Oh, had his watch stolen because he invited his girl up. Oh, you shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was like a one season, I think, three years ago. Like, females was stealing watches, Rolexes, money, and trying to set the guys up. So... You had to be on top of your P's and Q's, regardless of how crazy, yeah. sexy they are. Oh, they try to throw themselves on you. I don't care. They could easily be trying to steal the $50,000 yeah. <laughs> watch or something like that. Absolutely. And we are concealed carry holders. And we do we do have some kind of background when it comes to karate or Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So we know how to take a weapon out of your hand. We know how to detain you without actually... We can hurt you without breaking you. Yeah. We can. I can break gonna... you down, but I won't break no, no bones in your body. You'll feel like your bones have been broken in your body. That's yeah. so sick. You're going to teach you a lesson. said that was so sick. <laughs> Fuck like, you. We can you. break you without breaking you? We can break you without breaking your bones in your body. Damn. You'll feel it. And that's how I, I know. It's more about pressure point. It's how you deliver and how you act as a person, how you deliver. You can't hit somebody wrong. You possibly can kill them. But at so, the end of the day, you don't want that in your life. Yeah. So with other countries... You're allowed to still conceal there and everything you like that? You can't conceal there because they don't have the concealed carriers. You have to hire the guys that was in that area who have concealed carriers. Oh, okay. shit. I was about so to say, because in those countries... We have people that you can trust that you've been working throughout over the years with security companies, and they'll meet us at the airport. <clears> they'll meet us, and they're, they'll, they'll have our back. But then in the meantime, you're pretty much like physical hand-to-hand combat type right. of things. Like So not only that you feel like you can trust them, you still can't let your guard down because they're, they're from there, we're not. Yeah. yeah. So even when I'm at a third world country or even an, another country, I'm still on high alert 10 times more because they're there. I don't know who they work for. I don't know who paid them off. Yeah, they could so, easily be setting you up as well. Right. So that's why I'm, I'm always on point. I don't care how tough, big, bad you think you are. Somebody can always try to outdo you out, try to set you up yeah especially females because they they swear oh i'm fine i'm sexy i got a bbl i'm i got a fake look i'm i'm here damn dude that's wild (laughs) so what was like the craziest shit that happened wait so like the shit with the bail bonds and the shit with the celebrities what's Mm -hmm. more crazier like what the more crazier is the bodyguard because you don't know your people but bail bonds you know your people once you get to know them and you know what they're capable of. Even the, one, the ones that runs that try to come back and try to bond out. You still know they are. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of them that we say do not bond. It's on our bo- yeah. block list. And then, But the bodyguard, you don't know those people. You might go to <clears throat> Minnesota and work. You don't know those people. Mm-hmm. But I will not bond nobody out from Minnesota. Yeah, fuck that. Who would? And I'm in here in Florida, so why would I bond them out of, in Minnesota? Yeah. But if you get locked up in Minnesota and you live here, if our insurance company... It's out there. We can bond you out over there. Oh. But you have to live here. 
You okay. can't live in Minnesota. Yeah, it's like out of state shit. It's out of out of state. Ah. But we pay for a transfer fee, and we also pay the bondsman to post the bond, and then you get down here. But you have to leave within the week. Yeah. You can't be there. Oh, I'm bonded out here in Florida, but I'm staying up here. No, it won't work like yeah, that. Yeah, come here, stupid. Yeah, you, you coming back to Palm Beach. You, <laughs> you ever back. took care of a celebrity, and you're like, this man's a fucking, or this person's a fucking dick? Well, that's how they all start off until they get to know you. They got to start off as a dick. And to me, that's a part of, I want to say politics, that's a part of their life. Because at the same time, they got to protect their family too. Yeah. If you say you were a celebrity, your wife right here, and you don't, you don't know What's me. What's up, baby? You don't trust me. <laughs> so I trust you. You're going to say, you're going to talk to me aggressive. You're going to talk because that's how you're used to talking. But once you get to know me, you'll see my character. And you'll see your character, how you coming off home. And then you're go soft spoken. Hey, take care of my family. I'm trusting you. I know you. This is how it's going to be. Because sometimes they just want you to protect their wives, their children. Sometimes your dog, their dog. Yeah. So it's all how you, how your character, how your character is of first meet. When you first meet somebody, you can always tell. I would never talk to you aggressive. Ever. Even if it's my first time meeting you. You'll be surprised people try to talk aggressive, even when you're with your client. Hey, can I get an autograph? It's hey, a different way. Off? It's a different way you get an autograph. Say, excuse me, sir, may I please get an autograph? Because mm-hmm. some people come off as where you got to do it just because you're a celebrity. You don't got to do shit. If I'm a celebrity and you walk up to me, give me an autograph. You know what the verse, vo- vocabulary words you just said? Give me. Yeah. Give me what got you here. Fuck no. Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to being a bodyguard, right, is there like a network you join to get clients like that? Or is well, it just word, word of mouth? mouth? Say, for instance, it's sometimes it's word of mouth, but if I you see me with him, with him working, mm-hmm. and a month later he's just going to go home and chill, he got his guys that at his hometown that he works with. I'm his traveling bodyguard. Mm-hmm. And you say, hey, I work. I saw you work with my, my buddy. Can you come do some work for me? And that's how it starts. And that's how it leads, and that's how it follows you. So your resume always sticks with you. Have you ever been a bouncer? Yeah, of course I've been a bouncer. That's where it started. Was that shit fun? It was fun. Sometimes it wasn't fun because I don't... To me, they say work hard. I don't like to work hard. I like to work hard. I like to earn my money, Yeah, but I don't like to overly be work. Like, if I have to kick you out of the club, that means I'm overly work. And they, you're getting paid the same. You're getting paid the same regardless, but at the same time, if you acting a drunk and you spilling your your bottles on females, you pouring out the liquor, you spitting on everybody in the club, yeah, you deserve to go. Yeah, You want to fight, you deserve to go. I noticed somebody on Facebook says, oh, body, all security guards broke. No, security, like, security, security guards are not broke. They just want to do that extra work to make extra income. So security guards are not broke. So get that out of your head. And um, when you work in the club, say, for instance, you, I, mean, I always work at the front, though, because I handle myself very well. Do you have to wear shades when you're a bouncer? You don't never wear I've shades. I've only seen bouncers like this. Like glasses. Well, gla- some of them wear glasses so they can visualize the club. To me, I like working the front though because I know what's coming in, and I like to. I I don't want to say test you. I like to see what type of person you are before you come into the club. Yeah. Like I try you just to see how you'll be. I'll say, okay, let me see your ID. How old are you? Who are you with? Okay, this is how much it is to get in the club, and then you say, oh, you will look at me like that? Yeah, I said that. That's how. I'm- okay, yeah, no problem. I'm scared. But right then now. if you say. <laughs> Oh fuck, nigga! Oh yeah, have a nice night. Thanks for coming out. This spot is not for you. And you, you just refi- won't let him in to begin. With. I just won't let him in the beginning because you already have a shitty attitude. I was so like into your eyes right there. Fuck I, for- you. I forgot Nicholson, <laughs> and I kind of stared into the side. And I was like, when the fuck did he? Fuck get you. So, so this, this, so say for instance, I'm the front door. Your yeah. first impression on the person. That's how you could determine if they go come in and enjoy themselves, or be a dick, or be a fuck you to everybody. Yeah. So that's why I like to be at the front door. So that's why the environment going to be good and healthy anytime I'm at the front door. I feel you. But if I work inside, if I see a fight, you get slammed, then you get put out. Like in that order? In that order. What if the slam puts you out? Well, if the slam puts you out, you're going to be asleep. <laughs> and I have the other guys to escort you out. That's it. Damn. Do you just like put them on the sidewalk? Like what, what do you Put them on the that? sidewalk. Sit them on the sidewalk, especially if they fight bouncers. I hate people who think they can beat up bouncers. You're outnumbered for first. Yeah. We got 10 to 15 guys working the club. That's so scary. Like, what What do you feel for your job application? Are you big as fuck? No, they just see how you handle yourself. If you can handle yourself. See, I can manage to beat so, up three people. So can I be a bouncer? You can be a bouncer. I don't put nothing past nobody. 
Because just because you're small don't mean you can't take nobody out. I'm I'm not We had a guy I'm fun, I'm bodyguard right now, we got a five foot Hold two up. guy. I'm not small. You batik. <laughs> There's no K in that word, but whatever. So wait, is the is this five foot two guy like a pug? Like is he just like he, he's built? stocky too, but he's a fighter. The he's an that? MMA fighter. What? You heard that? No, oh, yeah, I I, oh, I got two inches. I hit, I hit the I hit the He's an MMA side. fighter. He's an MMA fighter, so he know how to handle himself. And he's five two. He's five two. Yeah, he needs to fight his fucking genetics, dog. That just sucks. So you just got to think about him escorting you out, and you'll be surpri- surprised. He he take the bigger dudes out. I feel like he just carries them. That's, like a That's how it's supposed to be. That's the whole purpose. If I see you and I test you on the first day, when it's a fight breakout, I see how you are and interact, interact. If you can't handle yourself, you ain't, you're never going to work with me again. Even even if you get in a shootout, you got to be able to protect your client at all times. Damn. Have Has that happened to you before where you get into a shootout with either being a bodyguard or like a bouncer? I guess it's a little different. But... A little different with a bodyguard because the police be at the front door. Bell bonds, you're going to... Because people look at us as if we're law enforcement. We're not law enforcement, but we're officers of the court. We got powers of arrest just like they do. We do warrants, we serve warrants. So some things occasionally happen like that. It didn't happen to me, but I know some of the guys down south got shot at. Fuck. But they returned fire and also PD backed them up as well. They pistol with someone? No, we don't do no pistol whip. We, we got to handle ourselves in a very professional way because we're also representations of the courts. Yeah. I feel you. If, What's if, that one thing where it's people, it's like a secret society? What you mean? I don't know. I forget what it's what? called. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. It's like... So, the I, fuck are you talking no, about? No, no, no. It, it's <laughs> not like I'm the Illuminati or any shit like that. It's like that secret society. I forget what it's called. But um, people are... Like the Freemasons? Yes. Oh, How is that even part of this? I don't know. I feel like bail bonds people are Freemasons. No, anyone could be a Freemason, dude. Anyone could be a Freemason. What the you fuck is a racist. Freemason? Dude, my, we, uncle, my uncle's that. a Freemason. What does that mean? I am a Freemason. I can't speak on that. It's Are, just and you it's, do bail bonds. Yes, it makes sense, bro. No, no. That's part of your job. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's literally just more of like a historical society. It's a fraternity. Yeah, it's basically that's all. This fraternity is a brotherlyhood. It's like you join. They have their little secrets and everything like that. I'm not saying they're little, but you know, they're they're secrets. And then like they talk about it. They discuss things. They're into certain shit. And then you got to pay it. a monthly fee. It's no mon- mon- monthly fee, but you do got to pay your tuition. We call it tuition. It's any like any other fraternity, you gotta pay your tuition. I feel you. Is it is it I'm not asking for information specific, but is it like cool to be part of that organization? It, it's it good to you? always have a brotherly hood. You will protect your brother, lead your brother, help guide your brother, and also be there for your brother. I feel like that's written on the wall. Hey, it is what it is. I feel you. That's but you, that's that's you cool. got your brother's back, you got your brother's back. And it's probably like a good network. It's also for networking, also professionalism, also for politics, everything. Everything works out for itself. Do you feel like they're like integral to society from your from I your vantage point? I don't speak on different point of I, views, what everybody else think about it, because we know what we are and we know how further what to take it and what to be in it and how to how to protect ourselves. Okay. That's cool. That shit got intense. Like it's like ten <laughs> degrees hotter. This, in this, this room. is his. This is his group. That's no. That's I, know, I didn't know, bro. I didn't realize you were part of them. Me either. <laughs> I mean, no, I said it because I was like, I, I thought feel like bail did, bond. I thought you were like, no, he never told me that shit. But oh. I was like, I feel like all bail bond people are that like secret society shit. And I was like, it's not. A it's cult. not secret society. We just. Yeah. I mean, we on the same side as the law. We just do a different thing from the law. We just go get our once in future. We just help the court system out. It's the bail system. That's it. Do you, this is with the bail bonds, not the Freemasons. Yeah, right? not the Freemasons. Freemasons okay. is a whole other subject that can't speak on. I feel it because I was about to say Freemasons do sound like bail bonds. No. Nah. So with, do you feel like there's a more critical eye on like the bail bond situation because like you're not technically a cop, but at the same time you're operating as an officer of the court? Yeah. Well, that's what that's it's it's different varieties. We we fall up under the federal, so we still. Under the federal laws, we still have to protect. We still have to protect your rights. You still have rights. You still. So you still Mirandize and everything. No, we're not Mirandize, but because once you become a, once you become our bond, we own you. Yeah, oh. they've already you, they've already been Mirandized and everything. Yeah, they already been Mirandized when they went to court. I mean, do you get to put sirens on your car? A who? Do you get to put sirens on your car? Well, only when you put sirens, you put lights on your car only for once in futures that run. You don't take advantage of the situation. 
you don't want to take advantage of the situation. Because yeah, then it's just going to make you look bad. I can't be a bill bond. Yeah, you, you, you pull, definitely you, could not Like, say, for instance, somebody person. driving the car, you know they want to, you all rush, like, siren, make sure everybody else safe to get around in the area. Yeah. This guy could be a shooter. This guy could be a most wanted fugitive that he's been looking, wanted out of California. Mm -hmm. And we get a call from the insurance company, hey, the guy's in your city. Uh, we got confirmation. Of, okay, we on him. But there's certain crimes that you could do that crimes, no bail. Do crimes. No, I'm not I'm saying, like, no bail. What you mean? Like, Everybody. Oh have yeah, a bond. I mean some some judges will say you don't have bail. They deny they deny your bond. Uh, but you can still apply for it. No, you can or appeal it. Not if it's denied. Okay. You can you can once it's denied, you can appeal the deny the deny, but you have to have because you're too much of a threat. Well, yeah. you want, you're too much of a threat, and you don't want to get put back into society, and you're doing re reoccurring. Every time you get out, you're doing the same thing. Yeah, I feel you. If they take, like, a, a serial rapist or something, and then they're like... Murder, you know, it could be a murderer, yeah. serious drug trafficker, serious anything. Uh, or so a flight you beat your wife, you're, you, you just, you know him for beating your wife. Your, your bond is denied. Every time we give you a bond, you go back out and you beat your wife. Damn. So this time you get arrested, deny a bond. Yeah, you're staying in jail. You're staying in jail. So woman beaters... You will be in jail. Deservedly. Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I'm going to make a point about that. That's that's ridiculous. And child pornography, I hate that. If you got to watch child, children and you have children of your own, you're sick. Go get help. Do you? Do, does that happen a lot? Where you, where Absolutely. You if you look shit? on a book and blotter, everybody has a book and blotter. You can look on book and blotter. Every day you'll see somebody getting arrested for child pornography. What? Um, molestation. Everything and it's just this is a sick world we live in, but at the end of the day, you still got to protect yours and privacy. So, yeah, and I heard sex trafficking is also like really big in Florida. Sex trafficking is big everywhere, okay. Florida is just one of the stomping grounds because we have one of the big ports and one of the biggest airports, yeah, okay. Anywhere is big airports, it's a you know possible for everything, yeah. So, it's basically like a it's a it's a it's a it's a post for for that for everything. Anywhere is big, it's, it's always somebody you got. 200 million people live in one area 10 of those things gonna slip through the cracks because you can't keep up with 200 million people yeah and they're already short staff understaffed underpaid so you already got mis you know misconcept misconstrued yeah. and all, all the way above of course so things gonna slip through the crack even water you got water on the crack you got water on the surface uh-huh that water gonna find that crack to go through yeah and it might it might not get the whole puddle if I pull a puddle right here but some drops are going to get out. Some drops going to get out. Some going to fall on the table. Some going to dry up. Mm -hmm. Something going to slip through the crack. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. Damn. Yeah. So, like, moving forward, and I'm just curious, like, what your, like, future goals are for, like, where you want to go with either being a bodyguard or whatever else. Do you do you have, like, an ideal situation for yourself, like, so many years from now? To me, I want to be a cop. Really? I'm actually just enrolled back in school want to be a cop. So, I just don't know what the part, department I'm going to go for it. <laughs> um, I got a couple offers. I just want to take the right, correct career step. But even if you're a bail bonds person, you still have to go to... You still have to go to the separate academy because that's a separate, whole other different intensity. And once you become a cop, you can't be a bail bonds anymore because it's conflict of interest. Because say, for instance, if I'm a cop and I'm a bail bonds, what is that? I'm bringing all the clients to my mm, office. Yeah. That's illegal. That That won't be right. Yeah. So that's why it's conflict conflict of interest. So you'd have to shut that one business down in order to bail do bonds. You can't do that no longer once you become a law enforcement officer. Okay, okay. You see, it? it's one or the either other. But you could still be this uh, the bodyguard, right? Only if the chief approves it. If the chief approves it, you can be one. So now you're the bodyguard of the law. No, no, no. You law enforcement, but if he approves, you can be a law, you can be a bodyguard for a particular client that he approves. Then it's it's a yeah. Yo, fuck that. Become a detective. You got to earn your way to be a detective. You, you can just can't, uh, you can apply, but you have it's to like a promotion. earn your strategy. It's like a promotion or be a sergeant, lieutenant, but you have to earn your way to be a detective. Everybody can be a detective because some of the stuff you see, you won't be able to control or handle. Would yeah. you want to be a detective? I would want to be a DEA uh, marshal or a um, fugitive, uh, a U.S. marshal. Are you, I want to be a U.S. marshal or DEA. That's where I would like to go, but I'm a little too old for that. Is DEA like detective? No, DEA, Drug Enforcement Authority. <laughs> None of that sounds like a detective, dog. Well, I mean, well, drug enforcement's oh, like drug enforcement. They basically like detectives wear plain clothes. Okay, but detectives. U.S. Marshal wear plain clothes. But detectives wear suits. Well, they 
dress comfortably because you're investigating. You're sitting behind a desk all day. I feel you. So you you're not just investigating this case, you're investigating another case cases. Nah, yeah. see in you my like mind, a portfolio, I, have, portfolio. I have like I see you with like a white button down and a tan. Don't watch suit. TV. The TV is no. Bullshit. I'm just saying this is different TV. <laughs> TV is and fucking bullshit. And I see bullshit. you like every time you see a clue, you just go. No, fuck out of you. Got to share every clue with everybody. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Hell no, because. This person might be a smart area. I might be smart in a different area. He might be smart in a different area. So if you take this bottle and you hide it from both of us, all of us, mm -hmm. how the fuck that clue gonna get found or get um the family it makes the family happy and everybody get this case solved. I'm gonna be like, oh shit, I gotta call Detective T. You gotta call Detective, your your sergeant, then your lieutenant, and then the chief, cause they wanna know what's going on. Cause this bottle could be the evidence. Say for instance, a murder happened, but the the perpetrator drunk out that, that bottle. But yeah. you took the bottle and you hit it. That can solve the case. You just fucked up the whole case by hiding evidence. And you can get written up for your supervisor, for your yeah, superior. Yeah, are they going to write you up when you have a beige suit on, though? They're going to write your mm. ass up and get your ass out of the department. <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting there, though. I don't know what you're expecting. <laughs> no, I, I want to see you with a beige suit just shushing people. I'm not going to shush nobody. If I got something, hey, man... I found a water bottle, get that down to the lab and get it tested. Why would you hide the bottle? No, I'm and then we're just like, we'll get it right now. And you're like, shh. No. I know you will. No, you got to. You, you want to see him in like a play of yeah. a detective. Like, that's see, what you want. No, like, be an actor, bro. No, fuck. Why? Act I'll be your bodyguard. Mm, actors don't make the money like they used to make back in the days. I call it Denzel money. <laughs> Who make Denzel money nowadays? Denzel. That's it. That's it. Or The yeah. Rock. Maybe Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. For every one successful actor, you got like a, a, like 10,000 starving artists right. <laughs> sitting that's out there. That's what I'm saying. You got like 10,000 starving artists that's in that film that's not getting paid because you two in the front of the camera. No, no, oh, no. Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. You got the in because you're out here bodyguarding for people. You take an acting class or two on the side. You're crushing it. You already got, you wear shorts. You're already halfway in. And then, bro. What the fuck shorts got to do? <laughs> Just saying, dog. <laughs> so you're in there crushing it, and then they're like, yo, we need an extra or something. Or you could fuck around with the people you're bodyguarding, and you're like, and scene. And they're like, yo, you're a bomb-ass actor. I would really want to be, a, uh, besides law enforcement, a music executive. I thought you were going to say massage. Are, fuck no. Are you, like, musically inclined? Like, do you well, play to instruments me, I, I like to anything? network with different people, see their different aspect in the music and in the entertainment business, and put other artists on show them the intake of you know been becoming an artist because most artists nowadays are just sign 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 and not really paying attention to the yeah to, you get fucked to what they're doing to what they're doing and as your music executive for the company you work for the company and you work for the artist as well so you mm -hmm. want to make sure the artist is happy yeah and in the day your music is that you're supposed to make sure your artist is always happy yeah so if the artist said hey man i don't like the deal your job is supposed to go back into the executive doors hey my artist is bitching complaining Make this deal happen for them. Yeah. You guys got your money off top of them. Now this guy's improving and his work is improving. What can you do for him now? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the music industry is a really extortative industry. Dog, it exactly. is fucking wild. They need, they need a union, to be honest. They need a union. Yeah, and they're See, never going to have heard. it. So, they like, need a union. Because like, with those contracts, they'll literally say, we're going to give you 500 grand. Mm -hmm. And then that's all of a sudden, the, it's a like... It's a loan. Yeah, exactly. It's and then like money. all of a sudden, it's like, you owe them 500 grand back if you don't pay back everything with your sales. Yeah. With the sales. Well, no, no. And then they have your masters and shit. So everything, like... The reason why um, people are like, oh... You can get your masters back, is because you have to pay that money back, and then you'll get the credentials to your song back. Yeah. From my, from yeah, my, they definitely need a union. From my experience, <laughs> it'll, never, it'll never happen. From my experience, the person who actually did good business with with music is Prince and Michael Jackson. Those are the ones they own. You know, half of the record label they own. They masters. They help other artists own their masters. Yeah, they I think it was the different stuff, but to me. It's okay to get fucked in the beginning because you don't know about it. Yeah. But after a while, pay me what you owe me. Mm -hmm. Well, it was Prince. Prince, uh, Nas wanted to make a song with Prince. And Prince didn't. Because he's like, do you own your master's dog? Right. And he was like, and Prince is like, yeah, hit me up when you do. Right. So it's just, it's That's crazy the business. Shit. It's about yeah. business. Because I own my master's. I'm not finna pay somebody else half of what you really owe. And, and the record's gonna sell regardless. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. To me, music executives or music owners... They should, you know, they they got to, I don't want to say fuck you. They just got to make the investment first. Yeah. If Dog. I'm investing you a million dollars, nobody never heard of you. I have to make that back. 
Yeah. So that should be understandable in the music entertainment business. But now I see you growing. Like, let's take Drake, for instance. Drake is growing. He grew. He's, he outpassed everybody. Yeah. yeah. Now he come back to me and say, hey, man, can you work a better deal? Of course. Hell yeah. I got my money off you 10 times. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want, I got you. Whatever you need, got you. Whatever you want. You want to play? Fuck it. Get it. Yeah. But honestly, like, music labels are just banks, dog. They're literally just banks. Yeah. It's shitty interest rate and everything. And then what they can do, too, is like, so let's say, let's say fucking you two are at, owned by the same music label. Like, you're both signed to the same shit. And he's popping off and everything. And then you, like, you have a style for a song. They can literally, because you guys are both signed to the same music label, they own your music. They could take your style, give it to him to make him pop off more. And then you know they'll they'll basically feed on your corpse yeah. at that point. You get right. some like artists like writing rights and shit for that. But writers like, get paid too. Writers get paid. <clears throat> yeah, too, but I'm saying like for his flow, they could take anyone's fucking flow. Yeah, he could just like take my flow, tell right. you this is what's gonna work for you, and then like I would be like right. fucked. Basically. And then they can put more money into him because right. then they see the fucking shit. The best way to do it, bro, now is like DistroKid or sound distribution and shit like that, and you can fucking um. You put all the money through yourself, and you create your own record label. And then even if labels try to sign you, you're signed to your own record label. And then you can tell the labels, you could be like, buy this record label out or sign me through the record label. So still, instead of signing 100% of you, they can only sign 50% of you. Yeah. You get what I'm because saying? Because you're, you're and the rest you of still you get those, by the company Yeah, itself. and you still get the fucking shit from, like, the benefits of, like, mm-hmm. a label if there is. Yeah. So, that's like, like... That's like Ace Hood. He, come, he came out, when he came out with DJ Cali. He came out, you know, hood, Ace Hood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's not how he wanted to come out. Mm-hmm. He wanted to come out as a regular artist so his music can grow and get bigger than what it was. Yeah. But now he, a different person, now his music is coming out how he want his music to be. Yeah. Sometimes he's... the record company wants you to act a certain way and you really don't have no choice but to yeah. go you how they want you to persona. go. Yeah. So now he want to be him. And to me, that's the best way to go. Mm-hmm. He's independent. He's yeah. independent now, so now he's going to work harder. And since he's working harder, he's going he's earning what he worked hard for. Mm-hmm. And nobody can't take that away from yeah. him. His labor is his own. Because he's supposed to be bigger than what he is. Yeah, but then the music label was holding him back at a certain thing. And then they play, like, it's like politics, dog. And they hold that shit back, and then they're like, oh, no, this and this, and they say some bullshit. And then when the artist is finally able to go, they're not getting pushed the pushed same. The same so how people think they fell off. But when you're supposed to do wow. it, it's like, that's why shit, like, uh, fucking... TikTok and everything, like, all that shit exists. Like, for artists now, you have to do more. Like, you have to collab with fucking influencers or whatever the fuck they are. You have to make, like, certain kind of music. So, in a way, you could still do it your own way, but you kind of have to adapt, Mm -hmm. like, to, like, make trends and shit. Yeah. So, I mean... Are you... Have you... Are you already, like, familiar with that industry? If you were to, like, get into it? What? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with artists and how to manage an artist and how to well maintain. Yeah, because he fucking body... He's because not oh, no, I mean, that, like in terms when of I'm bodyguarding, his other stuff. I'm actually paying attention to the movement and paying attention to some conversations that I need to pay, a um, pay attention to because networking is also what I like to do when I'm working with these individuals yeah. because yeah. I'm learning from them as well. And they're teaching me knowledge without them knowing they're teaching me knowledge. But you're absorbing it like and a I'm sponge. And absor- I'm, I'm absorbing a lot. And I'm getting like, so the, the stuff that I have in my head, that's, I'm able to manage artists and have them, help them get to where they need to be and also maintain them, make sure they get into good deals, make sure they, the artists are taken care of and the record labels are eating too. Yeah. Because like I would tell any artist or upcoming artist they're coming out with now, don't just come in and make it seem like you're going to make a multi-million dollar immediately as soon as you come out. Nobody yeah. never heard of you. Yeah. You got to get yourself known so the, the, the record label have to invest in you. Yeah. You have to create value You have for to the create label. value. Yeah. So that's the way I look at it. So I can be a music manager. I can be a music executive. But my where my heart at, I want to be in law enforcement. That's where my heart at right now. Okay. I mean, that's awesome. Like My heart's with you. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. Stop, dog. <laughs> nah, but then that's how we're finishing with the, the music shit, <laughs> you could fucking pull a Frank Ocean, bro. You know what Frank Ocean did, right? He fucking finessed. He did it where he made an album. And it was like a fucking, um, 
it wasn't his real album. So he made this album, and then the record label, it was the last album on his record, and the record label was like, okay, cool, you're done after this album. So he's like, all right, bet. So he pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. The record label's pushing it because they wanted to sell. He dropped the album, didn't give a fuck. Two days later, he's like, or like a day later or whatever, he goes, this is my real album. And he dropped it as an independent and made stupid fucking money. And then he was already on everyone's mind because the record labels were pushing him. So he's like, stupid bitches. That's crazy. That's uh, so funny. He was smart. playing chess right there. I mean, that's... But that's, that's a good movement he did because on his end, he looked out for him. Mm -hmm. But then you got to think about greed. It's not, they never win at the end of the day. Just because you, you make that move, don't think that was a power move. Because, yeah, you created a fan base here and there. Yeah, but when, once you fuck the music entertainment business, who going to want to put your music on platforms? How your music how your music going to actually be shown? I think he's one of those artists that's strong enough that he doesn't need a label. But you, you don't have to have a label to get your music played. What I mean is, say, for instance, you're going to need somewhere to go mm -hmm. when you really don't have no place to go. Yeah. Like, yeah. say, for instance, you come home. I have no furniture. How are you going to get your furniture? You're going to go out and get it. Yeah. Okay, and I say, for instance, the music entertainment business are the people that sell the furniture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm how saying... How you going to get the furniture? Well, not, no, no. ain't going to want to fuck with you. Not every artist can do that, though. Not every yeah. artist can, but he, he Frank pulled Ocean, Frank Ocean can. Yeah. He, he pulled, rolled the he dice. And, he rolled and the he, dice he, and he got a chance. Got you think they're going to let that happen again? N never. That's what I'm Everyone's saying. Everyone's done. They're Everyone's dead. done. So he fucked it. Betty boy, Betty boy, Betty boy's dope. That's our that's our new intro. All like right, now T thing. said we can have fun, so we're gonna have fun. Better boy, better boy, better boy, go. All right. <laughs> Got this cat up here just chilling. Oh no, we're 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 here now. All right, bro. What this do you what it. else? Do you want to talk about where you came from and shit? I'll I talk came about from a you place to... called Riviera Beach. Ah, uh. a big the the hood. Born and raised, grew up in foster care. That's it. Really? Yep. Were you Why? in foster care your, your entire childhood or entire childhood entire, until I was like uh, 16 when I ran away. So the mom that you were talking about, was that your real mom or is that foster mom? Foster mom. My, my real mom, I met at age of 19. That's crazy. A, made of age of 19. But you don't know what, no, no story that you don't know people's story until you actually sit down and tell them. That's what we're doing. Yeah, but I didn't grow on the right side of foster care. Everything was wrong. Even from the foster parents, it was completely wrong. Went to school with hoes, dirty clothes, hungry sometimes. So you go through some experiences in foster care. I'm against the foster care system. Why? Just by, because they just place you in a home instead of, instead of actually doing an intensive background check on the individual. Yeah. Why would you place 15 kids in one home? And they just get paid like 500 bucks a head. Yeah, more than that. What? More, more than that, like up, 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 like two grand and better on per kid. And like, like, let's say they have fifteen kids; they're taken care of. Would they literally take those fifteen kids and put them in a three-two with the, with this foster mother? We or had like, how did that work? one, two, three, four bedroom, one bath, and we all had bump beds. We had two double side bump beds. So it's just a dorm. Like, say for instance, like this room, it'll be a bump bed right here, a bump bed right here. And someone signed up for that shit. You don't have no a choice. choice. If you're a kid, if you're a kid, you're, you're just kid, you you're, no you're put you're in there. As long as they place you with a roof over yet, they didn't care. They just put you okay. They they said they're gonna take care of you. They passed the course that we did give them. It needed to be more just a course because, like this one couple I seen, I'm not against you know gays, but it was just two guys. They use, they 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 had adopted kid. But they used that kid as child pornography. They was auctioning them off. What the I just read a story fuck? about that today. So it's, they just need to do a very, very intensive background check. It need to be an outside source. It don't need to be someone that works for an estate. It need to be an outside source doing an investigation and see if these parents actually fit. Like a Bell's Bond person. You don't got to be a Bell's Bond Because I know person. a guy, dog. What's up? It don't need to be a Bell's Bond. You need to be somebody private who does that for a living. We investigate. We do intensive background check, and we place this kid in a home. We'll take it away. Place the kid in a home for like six months to see how they do. And question the kid without the parents around. Because sometimes kids have no choice to lie. Yeah, because the parents it, by intimidation. So wait, they would have the kid in the same room while they as... question That's the kids. Insane, so they man. like the kid almost would feel like he's like yeah. just held up right there. <laughs> like that's why. They, like they can't. We you know we if if you look at the address, even the police department, the witnesses, if the address that I live in, it was over fifty calls a day there. 
because we was always calling the cops to try to get the cops there. Or my mom was trying to get the people that are showed them how we were living. We was in filth. We were living in filth and they didn't believe us. And sometimes when they had somebody working the inside of the state, so they'll know when the state come doing a visitation. So they'll send us to the store or they'll say, here, give a dollar to us and we'll walk around the block. And by the time the state come, we already gone and the house is clean. So they'll pay somebody to come clean the house. And then by the time the state leaves, we back into the fifth because everything else start happening. Meanwhile, so, they're damn. collecting 20, 30 grand yeah. a fucking month. What, the people who adopt? Yeah. yeah. If they're getting two grand a head and they got 15 kids in the house? Oh, so the adoption agency doesn't get money. Well, it's not the adoption the parents, agency. The it's the, it's the foster mom. It's the, the foster, foster parents. parents get the money. What? This, it's a yeah. crooked system that needs to be fixed. It needs to be, have a faucet on it. I'm about to take and advantage, mo- and dog. Most, and most of these kids, we're not bringing a kid in here. You can, you can keep most that of these yourself. kids, most of these kids would not be um, having mental issues or having depression or be thinking suicidal thoughts just because of what they experience. Because you you put in the home, and the whole time you're growing up, you're thinking these your real parents. And yeah. They're not. Then when you find out they're not your real parents, they start mistreating you, misleading you, misguiding you. And keep you so all the up. fifteen kids kind of looked the same. No, everybody was different. They was they're just not told what what their they're situation not is. told what the situation is until you you learn about it because you realize these people are too old to have all these kids. Yeah, and then when we figured when we found out because I had a visitation from my sister for my birthday and she brought me a cake. She was like, "Oh no, this is for you and your brothers." I was like, "All of us?" She said, "No, you, you, and you." My mom had you guys. We don't know who them kids is, but they just put us all in home together. So, so you knew grew your up real with sister, him. huh? You knew like your real sister. Yeah, I knew my met my real sister because she came looking for us. And so you happen to be in a foster care with two of your real brothers, then two of my real brothers and one of my real sister, in the same home. In the same home, but in the other room you had similar situation with their with their real family, and oh, then you fuck. had another real family. Then it got passed along. Like say, for instance, I have a daughter. You, my son. Your but daddy. you're old enough to take care. You're old enough to help me, and I give you four of the siblings. You take care of them to your house, and that's how it was being done. Oh shit! There's a lot of cricket stuff going on in the foster care system that they don't want to talk about, but it needs to be talked about because a lot of kids are dealing with situation. A lot of kids are being misled, misguided, and out in the streets and doing stuff they shouldn't have to be because they turn away and look for love. So. If your foster parent ain't giving you love and they mistreating you, you got locks on your doors. You shit literally in a can. You don't shit in the toilet. You're not allowed to take. You're not allowed to take one bath. And you got five seconds to be in that bathtub and be out. You got 15 kids. You got to think about it. Yeah. And Some sometimes you went to school. That's insane. Like, yeah. I don't even know what else to say. Like I'm like getting choked up. Like how is that possible? Like I mean that's but that's crazy. what I'm saying. People don't know. Because they wasn't living in there. People that knows that living in there, they know what I'm. They know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So sometimes you went to bed without eating. Yeah. So I mean, and that's why you have like some kids, like you know, when they go to school, mm-hmm. that's the one good meal they're getting a day. Yeah. That's the best meal they get. Exactly, a day. dog. Yeah. And that's the, they depend on that meal. Yeah. That's why you see some kids in school, they run to the cafeteria. Those yeah. school no, grades, like, bro, depend smack. about that. Like my mom, like she like she's she feels bad if like the school or if the day gets called off or whatever else or like for instance during COVID, mm-hmm. these kids she had no idea what was happening to them and she had kids t- coming up to her every day saying I'm hungry, I haven't eaten in a day, this mm-hmm. that the other and it's like Because most parents have too much on them that can bear bear for them. They can't the rent that got so sky high yeah. rocket, they can't. They got to afford rent, lights, water, cell phone bill, car insurance. Got to put gas into it, and you know these jobs ain't paying shit no more. Yeah, exactly. And we talking about back in the days when these jobs were paying, and we living up under this one individual roof. We're we're not allowed to go anywhere, hang out with nobody, spend the night at nobody's house. So really, nobody know what's going on with us. We just come in miserable. My day when I was going to high school, or going to middle school, my day was get to that cafeteria, eat all what you can eat. Because you don't know what your next meal going to be. Yeah. yeah. Stuff yourself while you can, basically. Yeah. And then that's just... I was literally after. this big when I was growing up. Literally Fucking skinny. Shit. You yeah, can see dog. my rib cage from the back. You can see my knees from the back. That's... Wow. 
Because you, you, some days you have to go without eating. If you feed yeah. 15 kids, some of us are not going to eat. You ever took a nap? Like, you ever had a nap for dinner? Uh, uh, Drink water for dinner? Drink I, water for breakfast? I, I couldn't even imagine. Like, I mean, like, you know, the, regardless of how I grew up, whether it been, like, sometimes, sometimes in my life we were poor or whatever else, we never were in the position where it's like we just couldn't eat, you know? Like, well, like, my parents struggled my entire life. It's a weird life, feeling, dog. Not like it's that. It's a weird feeling because yeah. you're basically saying that when you ever get older, you will you won't let your kids go through that. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I work the way I work because I want my kids to have what I never had. Do you have any kids? Yeah, I have kids. But they oh, nice. they won't have to go f- for anything because when I work, I make sure they're taken care of before I, I'm taken yeah. care of. Yeah. And when we was growing up, we didn't have that love that I have from love for my kids. So even a brace hug, a hug, just a make a somebody day. Like yeah. these kids that's going through it in elementary school, they're bad. They're not bad because they're acting out. They're bad because they just want some attention. They want attention yeah. and they don't want love. They're, and they just want like love. Just neglected. Yeah. And they and sometimes when they're aggressive and when they cursing. They're just looking for somebody to say, hey, just sit down. That's yeah. all they want. Yeah. They want some attention, some kind of attention, even if you hold their hand and walk them to the next class. That's yeah. all they want. Whether it be like bad attention or otherwise, it doesn't matter. That, they it just doesn't need matter. Something. They just need something. And that's why I say that's why I say these teachers got the hardest job because these teachers have what, twenty kids in the class with different mispersonalities. Yeah. yeah. And they don't know these individuals until they start working throughout the school year. And then they grow to know them, then they grow to know their problem, then they try to help. But sometimes it's too late. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, back in like high school or whatever else, I mean, I knew a few teachers in particular, not for me specifically, but I knew some of the things they did for other kids because they, they know the situation or un- or in. Yeah, exactly. They were in unbelievable situations and like they would like, you know, whether it be like if they needed even money to eat, they would like, you know, and that's the thing that sucks. These teachers don't get paid shit to begin with. At and all. They're here, they'll, they'll give them like the last few bucks they might have just to like. You know, make sure you eat or buy right. them food or like whatever else because they're just like or like a kid comes in, they don't got like fucking clothes that are like suitable to them. Right. And they're doing whatever they can for these kids. And it's just right. it's insane what teachers have to go through. That go through a lot because then they want them to have a 40 year degree. They want them to finish. And after they get that four year degree, they still got to take another test to become a teacher. Like to become a lawyer, you have to yeah, take a yeah. test. You shouldn't have to take another test to become a teacher. You already did the four-year degree. Yeah. So once you apply for the school board, you still got to take another intensive test. And if you don't pass, you won't be a teacher. Yeah. I don't think that's right for them. No. And on top of that, we're sh- we have we're short on teachers. Short on teachers just because of the pay. Yeah. I mean, like, if how you much get are a, teachers getting paid right now in Florida? Like fifty grand, maybe. But if like, that. But like, teachers have to buy the supplies for the school. They have to buy the, like everything, like every little thing. And on top of that. If rent's twenty five hundred bucks, three thousand bucks, you got a kid yourself. Right. How could you? How could you do anything? Like you can't do anything. You know, like that's ridiculous. And that's why some of the teachers come. They don't have attitudes on purpose. They just dealing with a lot at home. They dealing a lot in the school board and the principal. That they might not get along with. And that's why you see some teachers that start teaching and they turn down teaching because it's it's not worth it. It's not worth the headache. Yeah. And on top of that, teaching now is all about, you know, standardized testing, this, that, the other. So you're not really teaching kids teaching to, to teach be successful. successful. You're, you're teaching them to just pass the test. Pass the test. And they, now my son go to school. I ask him, do you guys learn in cursive? He say, no. He don't even know how to write no, in cursive. No, they don't do what cursive. Do you mean? Why? They don't do any of they that They don't anymore. do none of that in cursive. He don't know how to write. But he knows, he knows now. Learn? Yeah, I they only teach write us in before. cursive. I always write in cursive. How you sign your name? Cursive. In cursive. Yeah. Oh, they dude. don't teach it now. Well, now, no, because now when they I came barely down teach here, you like, how to they write teach you in uh, New York, like they teach you cursive. Now, and New York's, that's not New York's a part got a little better of a of a school system than down here. New York and Philly, they got a better. They got a Catholic school system. We don't have that. Yeah. They took Bible out of the schools down here. Yeah. So if you if you write right mm-hmm. now, you write you ask a kid right now that's from first to eighth grade, they can't write in cursive. Hey. Write in cursive, stupid. <laughs> you, you ask anybody right now in school these days, they can't write in cursive. They, they, what is that? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, even, like, literacy rates down here. Yeah. Like, you know, kids, like, you know, in New York, if you're, like, learning how to read by first grade or whatever else, like, down here, like, there's a complete... I Different mean, like, kids system. are just not learning the not way they need on, to be learning. Not on what we're supposed to be on. It's, it's about, let's pass this test, let's get them prepared, and that's it. Why is it like that? It's a sucky school board Dude, system. Yeah, that's literally it's, it. it's, it's politics. Instead of actually having somebody to actually talk, be in on the board. Yeah, and on top of that, like we were talking a little about a bit or a little about this off camera, but like 
because there's so much money that just gets kind of wasted. Wasted. You know, like instead of giving like the extra hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars that they have delegated to one thing, they'll just hire another administrator that doesn't do anything in the in the district because they're they're friends with them. In that place of position on yeah, them, and but, it's what do you do? Yeah, and then what are your position? That two hundred grand could have bought like crayons and shit for like crayons all for the, the kindergartners. No, 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 in no hold on, hold on. I have a real question, dog. I was talking about someone like uh, about this yesterday. So I was telling her how college is a fucking scam. How like you could take a loan out for fucking college and you can't take like at eighteen and you can't take a loan out to make a business or shit at eighteen. So I was explaining it to her like how it's all fucked up and how like certain shit with college is um doing it and it just doesn't make sense and how much they're finessing off that. So people colleges are making a shit ton of money, right? Well, colleges have become hedge funds now. Like exactly. they're, they're not they're not built to be like educational centers. They're they're built to like we're gonna build a new building. We're gonna take all. But this why money wouldn't and they do that? And do why wouldn't they do that in like the money they make? Why wouldn't they reinvest it in like school? Well, they starting to like reinvest elementary, into the players, as school. you can see. Some of them got an NIL, yeah. well, NIL deal. For aren't the they about players. to start getting like unions and stuff for uh, for college athletes now? Athletes, they have to because all the revenue that's coming in from the athlete and the athletic yeah, department, and they don't get anything. I no. mean, literally nothing. And even some of like the football players, mm -hmm. they still have a lot of the same injuries that like pro football, pro football players, players have, have. And then they After they don't college. have any protection. Protection or nothing. I mean, that's it's it's insanity. But you that's know. that's America, though. I, like Canada, I like the way they like we were just talking off camera with the healthcare program. Everybody need free healthcare. Yeah, yeah. Because you can create a problem over the years or just by the food that we eat. Yeah, I mean, not knowing. Well, think about this, right? Like, let's say you have a problem. Let's say you have like. A small, like, let's say you have stage one cancer, but it's super, super treatable. Super, right. But you don't have the money to, afford to deal it. with it. All of a sudden, when you, by the time you, you go to the hospital and you're just willing to destroy your entire fa uh, family's financials just to, like, get it, get, treated, it get treated, you could have had, like, the treatment to begin with. And on top of that, uh, top. the cost of the treatment, relatively speaking, is, like, what, hundreds of dollars, really? Like, the the chemicals and everything they use? Chemicals. And then you can it's be really a nothing. test dummy as well. Because yeah. they can say, okay, this, this it might be treatable. But let's try you with these chemicals. You're just going to be test dummy for the future of Americans. Yeah. And you could be possibly die. You can possibly be helped. But yeah. But at that point, you're willing to take such risks take such because risks. you just didn't get it treated when at it the, was like a, a, a one treatment thing. And Why do you think good. they do that shit, dog? Because it, we don't live in we don't have a preventative healthcare system. We have a disease management system. Right. You know, they make more money treating a person that's going to die instead of curing the person. instead of curing or or. You know, for instance, if everyone had health care and you went, everyone was able to go to the doctor once a year, get a checkup, everything like that, you would be able to avoid all these like diabetes. If everyone knew they were pre-diabetic or whatever else, and they had the, the resources to change their diet without destroying themselves financially or whatever else. Like just take that situation and just bring it across the board. If you had a system that actually was there for your best health, think of where we'd be. I mean, in, in Britain... Doctors still make a fuck ton of money. They make four hundred grand a year, five hundred grand a year, like Damn. they do here. But doctors over there get paid based on how healthy their clients are. Help, helping the client, you know. And like, just like y'all was telling me overseas with Paris and France, you can tell everybody over there's eating and living better, the skin color, oh. even the way of the happiness. People here are angry just by yeah. random shit. I mean, to me, it's no wonder why Americans are dying younger. They're way more unhappy. You have mass shootings happening all over the place. Like it's to me, it's just a symptom of like a, a declining society. You know, yeah. like it's it's ridiculous. Because America is just basically what a shirt says: off the shits. <laughs> They're literally I off like the, the way shits. You said here. that, Doug. Seriously. Yeah. No, I mean that's 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 a fact. I mean, there's the every every statistic that the socks that... say it too. <laughs> you know, product placement yeah no it's nice but every statistic that measures a society we we are not doing well you know like, uh, and and as people you got to think about our future generation and this is what they looking up to so if they send that we can't get along now what you think they're going to do when they get older exactly bro yeah exactly or, like that's why i'm so afraid to have kids but you got to train your kids to your best capability. No, I, I know. But, like, what if shit's just so outlandish? Well, it can be outlandish, but it's not up to you to be the guy. You're the captain of your ship, correct? I feel you. But, so, see. If you were going to board right now, you got 20 people on your ship. Who they listening to, paying attention to, that you're going to keep them safe, right? I got it. I'm on it. So, therefore, you the captain. 
you got to train your kids in the best that your accountability before you leave this earth. Don't listen to the politicians because they don't even know what they're doing half of the time. Yeah, yeah, but we're about to, we were talking about this the other day, like with the water wars and shit. Oh, no. So he's saying like more from a nihilistic perspective where yeah. it's just like, what's the point if everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket in 50 years? But it don't have to be if we fix it. See, that's exactly like, but I'm it's so like about this, fixing this old it. saying, oh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You got to fix it. It's broken, dog. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's beyond it's broken. destroyed. I mean, you know, and, you know, I, I go on rants all the time with Dylan, right? Where it's just like people need to start organizing, paying attention, really starting to fight back against the like the the powers that be to really create change like we don't have a very active uh citizenry in this country where you're willing to drop it and and do a strike and shut down a city because something's not going right you know right now everybody just based about money 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 bbls and the next star that's it yeah they're not focusing on okay, my kids' future, my kids' kids' future. Yeah. What what can we do better for them? I mean, we can still focus on the BBLs, but you know. No, I don't like the BBLs. Yeah, me either, dog. Nah. I like natural. I don't like hard shit. I don't <laughs> yeah, like it's <laughs> weird, dog. Smacking ass and hitting yeah. the wall. No, nah, that shit I is feel. hard as fuck. So BBL to me, the reason why I don't like BBL, I don't want this girl to look like this girl. This girl to look like this yeah. girl. This girl to look like because guess what? I just broke up with you. Now I gotta look back into you. But you're not changing your personality. You're not changing your mental health. You're not getting none of that looked at besides that BBL. Your shape, it, it comes if you just work the fuck out. Yeah. Stop being lazy. <laughs> so you're going to the doctor paying all this money. Ten more years, you got to pay the same money to get that reshape because the shit going to droop. Nah. It droops? It droops. Oh, no. It'll droop. What? Well, you got to think of all the weight that's added. The weight that's added. Your skin is just going to fall. <laughs> it's you're, just going to sag, dude. You're getting what? older. You got to think about it. You're gonna look like a freaking Statue oh, of Liberty. Have you, get... you have you ever seen hot. have no. you ever seen the like 60, 70 year old women that like live down in like you know just naming a town like a Boca type of town, right? Mm-hmm. And they all look the kind of same like older skin, Botox, button down, like but like and pushed the skin back, pushed back. Yeah, and like it's a similar look that yeah. you see with all these people. Like it's like you've just been doing the same thing forever. Same thing forever. Oh, I don't yeah. like BBLs. I like natural booties. Yeah. I don't like fat asses. I like comfortable ass. Mm-hmm. I like when you sit on me, it feel good. I don't like to sit on you and hurt. <laughs> what happens if you sit on me? Fuck you. Well, dog too. <laughs> he but, keeps um, trying. He keep trying, but he going his ass with be on the Statue of Liberty. Dude. Well, didn't you say, like, or no, I think it was him that was saying, like, you know, you're going to drop him at the end of this. And, like, oh, that's going to be how gonna we be end the garbage the podcast. Can. I'm leaving. You, how you're, you gonna you're leave? stuck. Fuck. <laughs> dog, yeah, bro. Natural natural bodies are bomb as fuck, dog. Natural bodies are saying fuck bomb the BBLs. Fuck. fuck the BBLs, dog. I don't give a fuck you got money. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, I don't give a fuck if one titty's smaller than the other. It's fun, bro. <laughs> I gotta suck the other one, make it swollen and make it the same size. I might want the titty to look cross side. Yeah, that shit's bring, lit, you know what I mean? bro. You have fucking milk spray in here and milk spray in here. I'm like, yo. BBLs is not going to be It's in. not it, dog. Stop doing Stop it. Stop doing that Stop shit. Stop doing it. Yeah, but that's the beauty of natural, you know? That's the exactly. beauty of they natural because they wonder why they single. They wonder why they ain't got no man. They wonder why they got problems because your mental health hasn't changed up here. Exactly. Can they fart the same when they get a BBL? If they can fart the same. It's going to stink the same. Ugh. It should have just looked ridiculous. <laughs> they can't. It looks like, I don't know what it looks like at this moment. Like a bus with two picks. Just imagine that. Bus driving with two picks with kids on it. Because <laughs> you're still going to have a baby. You're still going to want kids. You're still going to want a man to marry you and love you for who you are. How are you going to make me love you and you don't love your body? Answer that question. They're just uh, upgrading it. But it's not. A, I don't feel like it's an upgrade. How the fuck is an upgrade? This shit know, don't dog. look different. You're still going to have cellulite. You're still going to have. But that's just cute. No, it's not cute because it looks like a fucking piece of cake. You know how you no, slice no. a piece of cake and that halfway... Have you think a little, booty, a little bit of cellulite is cute, dog? You can Hell have no, it. I like scratch marks. You get a little scratch marks on your yeah. ass cheek, that's good. I don't care if you white, purple, green, and blue. You're going to get that ass. But them fucking BBS, we please stroking, stop. We dog. Please stop. Because <laughs> you're killing your back. You're killing your heart. You're killing everything. And you stink. You stink. It smells gross. What about fake? T- I don't like fake titties either. Fake titties can pass because the fake titties been going on since the 1900s. BBL just came apart. The fake titties are like real titties are cute. Fake titties are cute too. Mm. 
Yes. <laughs> I kind of. I, I just don't want when you sucking it, that bitch fold like the mic. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah. I don't know. I kind of like when <laughs> their titties look like they've been through a lot. Nah, the titties are good. Titties can survive. Yeah. Because I don't see no fifty and sixty year old have some nice perky titties by being to work. Okay. But BBL. Can girls work out to keep their titties perky or no? I don't know. I don't know about that. I I, th- I think that. Some that girls got a question that you see on the bottom. Man, answer that. Answer that shit. Listen, yeah, can you work out to make your titties go up or no? Alize, can you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, dog, dog, all I'm saying. I'm going is... in. This is Beta Boys. We oh, do everything. Beta Boys. Grr. Dog, if she, no, I think she found out that workout, and I think it's a family <laughs> secret, dog. Cause that shit's insane. But uh, yeah. So, what you what you like to do in common right now? Do what? What do you like to do about your stuff? What do you mean? Like my BBL? Yeah. I just, you know, I like to sit certain places, dog. Fuck out of here. Well, you asked me, bro. Fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 work on yourself, you know? That's that's it. To work that's on myself? It. Yeah. I yeah. like to go on walks, bro, by myself. I like to throw my phone, like, away sometimes. Well, that's cool, because I like to deactivate my page and listen to country music. <laughs> I like Chris Stapleton. I like Garth Brooks. I like a lot of good people that put you in your mindset. And sometimes just sit in the car and just listen, close my eyes, and just vibe. Yeah, there's sometimes. Yes, I'm a big country boy. No one's saying you're not, dog. You don't got to get offensive. Big country boy. There's sometimes <laughs> I'll see Nick coming out of the bathroom in the morning. His hair is slicked back, and he's crying just listening to Old Town Road. I'm like, you're all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I fucking love this song. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> no, I really try not to like be, like be on like cellular shit if I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to like fucking put my phone under my pillow and shit, and then like. But that, that's walk good. A mile or two. At the end of the day, but then that bitch call you. What you gonna do? Did she call me while I'm on my walk? Because I'm not gonna answer it. You gonna answer that motherfucking phone? No, because I leave my phone like. And she gonna whoop your ass. Sometimes it's good to get hit, dog. Like, <laughs> you're talking to the wrong person, dude. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> so what else you like us to talk about when you come on to the show? I'm new here. I like it. What do you think about the show since I've been here? I like your stories. I don't like how you fuck with France so hard, though. Fuck uh, with who? Fuck France. Nah, France is great. France is good. Russia, I like Russia. I like Germany. Those are places that I thought that I wasn't going to like because I'm going by what people are saying. Yeah. So by your experiences, go and enjoy yourself. I haven't been to Vegas yet. That's what I want to go to. I heard Vegas is fun. I don't know. Don't take Dylan though. Why? You're going to get lost. <laughs> we'll never see him again. You, no, you're not going with me. Come you're on, bro. Gonna, we can fuck fucking... No. We can drive there no, together. No, hell to Why? We can record no. it. That'd be so much fun. No. We make such a good team. You're going to get lost. Like how? You're going to get lost in somebody's pussy, bro. Are you going to find me? No. Fuck no. <laughs> dog. I'm so, calling Las Vegas. Yo, T and D. T and D my ass. T and D. No. All right, D and T. D, D's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, bro? I'm chilling, man. I know. I feel it. So what's your... Have you have you been to California? What's your Zodiac sign? Never, uh, yeah, I've been to California. I hate LA. Hate it. Hate LA. No food. No nothing. The food is garbage. I like San Diego. Haven't been to San Diego, I've but San Diego. LA is garbage. I don't see why people love living in California. I, I I just like the weather. Well, the weather's here, the same thing. It's a little nicer there. To me, I just, I don't think so, because the whole time I was there, all I seen was smoke, fog, and smoke coming out of everywhere, and it was... Um, I was during the fires. Oh shit! Fires. Okay, you went. You went during it. A- okay, no, I'm not gonna lie. That could probably, you know, shape your uh, reaction. L- to L.A. It. I do understand. L.A. was like every I don't. I could not come, see myself living there. Every time you come outside, you see like white stuff over your car, like it's snow, but it's, it's actually it's like ashes. Ashes. Yeah. Oh, well, and you're dude. breathing that shit in. So imagine <laughs> how those people that's you know causing chemicals and and cancer because of what they breathe. Yeah, in. that's gross. And it's it's just a different look. I, I just I had a bad experience. Every time I went there, I went there multiple times. It never changed. All it is is, oh, let's go to the weed spot. Oh, let's go to this, see what they got to weed. Oh, let's try this food. The food is garbage. They can't cook. L.A., you got to find somebody who can cook, man. You fucking up, dog. The and ramen was good there. Did you have the ramen over no, there? No, I ain't tried the ramen. I tried every soul food spot. I tried every Mexican spot. I'm surprised. All the Mexicans that live there, the Yo, food is straight garbage. Really? So if you go to San Diego, because it's right on the border over there, 
their Mexican food is fucking banging. It's no authentic food, and it tastes too salty, or it's overcooked, or it's undercooked. My experience in L.A., and I went to multiple times, not just one time. I didn't just stay for one or two days. I stayed for two weeks. Two weeks, we did not eat anything. We had to hire a cook <laughs> from, from, from Florida to <laughs> fly to California. Fuck. And literally, the food was straight garbage. I'm sorry you had to go through Even that. chicken that and waffles was disgusting. I don't say everybody eat at that place. Dog, you ever been to Bebe's before they closed down? Yeah, Bebe's. That's I. I went to them. That chicken was and that was the chicken best. and waffles right in Okeechobee. Yeah, Bro. I went there. They was they was good. That chicken and waffles was good. Do you have a place around here that you recommend for chicken and waffles? Because I haven't been to another one. That chicken and about. waffles. I haven't found a place to do chicken and waffles good here. But a, a lady go by the name of um, Mama D's and Mama B's. I don't know for sure. She's off of Old Dixon River Beach. She got the best soul food in town. And um, is it better than Bebe's? It's better than Bebe's. Uh, and it's yep. another place on That's US. That's where we're going. Another place on US One is called Southern Kitchen. That's a good place. It's like a mom and pop's place. It's not overcrowded. They cook food fresh. And you're going to eat and you're going to love it. Southern Kitchen. And then um, what? where else? Um, That's the only two soul food spot. And... Chinese spot is right off of Palm Beach Lakes behind Chick Fil A. It's a buffet. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, I've never been to. The, yeah, we've pat, we've walked no, by yeah, that one. That's a good spot. Good for Chinese. I never ate at a Chinese spot. My friends invited me out there about a month ago. I enjoyed it. And I went back again and enjoyed it. It didn't upset me. I don't like Golden Corral. Golden Corral, nah, I will never go. Yo, who the fuck's Golden talking Corral. about Golden Corral, dog? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to Sados? I've been to Sados. They are. Right. They just they're, oh, they're overrated to me. Yeah, overrated, dog. Uh, I'm they a sucker for Sados. I've been going there since I was a kid. Uh, that, I think it's overrated. <laughs> I've been there for the first time. I went to shit. different ones. I went to one downtown. I went to one in Fort Lauderdale. I went to one in Miami. All of them are just overrated. Not enough food. Yeah, that's that's usually the problem anywhere we go. <laughs> Not enough food. Yeah, fuck Sados. And they always put you like at that table with the people. Like, I went there one time, dog. So like in New York, in Manhattan, in Chinatown, when they sit you like in um certain spots, they share the table. So like, let's say you two are eating. And then there's like it's a three table person, and I'm like a one top. They'll sit me with you guys, and you know it's kind of like it's not like super awkward, but you you're more talkative. So when they were with Sados, they're like, okay, you're gonna sit. And there was a, another family here. I was like, yo, about to talk to him. Like, what's up? And they're all just like, I'm like, guys, let's experience this together. What the fuck's going on? The guy just caught an egg in his hat. Are you not impressed? Like, fuck you guys. And they're like, this is our third time here this week. Mm-mm. Fuck you, bro. Settles overrated. Overrated, dog. Overrated. Oh, yeah, yeah. overrated. Touche, touche, touche. But a, a good place to eat is Twin Peaks. I like Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. You try to pick Twin Peaks yet? We've been there once. Yeah, Twin Peaks is pretty good. I like it's... the veal. Y'all try the veal? No. Never had the veal from fucking <laughs> Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so I, I like that. And Did you hear what they do to like for girls to get jobs there? They got to put the outfit on, and then they take pictures and send them to corporate, and then basically, like, smash your pass, question mark. Well, if you get put in something, I don't want you to look like Oompa Loompa. Yeah. I want you to look like something that bring people in. I'm not trying to draw people away. I'm trying to bring people in. It's like... That's their brand, though. Brand. That's the yeah. brand. It's like Hooters. You ain't finna dress up in the Oompa Loompa and say, hey, you got the job. But every time somebody come in, they, nah, I want her serving me. One of one of our last podcasts, we actually had our buddy that worked at Hooters. Actually, yeah, for real, yeah. <laughs> I love that woman, dog. Yeah, she's great. Wow, she got the Hooters on her, don't she? She got no Hooters, dog. What the fuck? But she got a pooper. What's a pooper? Nigga, there ain't no pooper, man. <laughs> what are you talking about, dog? A pooper mean pussy. She got a booty. Say booty. Don't say pooper. pooper. I feel like pooper just no went with pooper. The flow. No, that's not no <laughs> ever. Don't ever say it again in your life. All right, she got a pooper. What the fuck, bro? She Don't got a pooper. Dog. No, that's all right. She didn't have that either. I'm just trying to hype my friend up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> she, she got a job at Hooters, bro. I don't want to get fired. She got a job at Hooters with a flat booty. No, it, it, he's exaggerating. She 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 has the right. She right the physique. She has the right physique. I don't like to how work he's at sleeping. Hooters. Yeah, that, that is pretty wild. What he's doing right Do now. Do you not see this shit? He's a cat. <laughs> you got animal lovers out there. Don't do that. I love him. Yeah, dude. We don't need Peter knocking our door down. Exactly. You don't need Peter. Is Peter nice? 
I don't. You some nasty motherfucker. Listen, bro. I want you to poke the cat like no, that. No, no, listen. listen. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, you didn't arrest us. We get bail. And we're, always, always, and always. We're a runner. You're running. Your ass is grass. And then that means we just have another reason to hang out with them. Now nah, I'ma tase your ass first, and then you put your ass in jail. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like. And as he's tasing, he's going to be like, remember that shit you said with the pooper thing? <laughs> <laughs> He'll tase you even before you need to get caught. <laughs> what time it is now? It's 3.34. All right, so that's enough. End this shit. We're good. I'm going to bed. You got to say beta boys, I'm man. Done. I'm not fucking done. Fuck out of here, <laughs> All son. right, I'm sorry. Beta boys out. What the fuck? Beta oh, boys oh, out. No, no. <laughs> you, send us out. Send us out. You All right, it's the beta boys live in the mic. We out. See it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs>